Hey guys, and welcome to Geared On For What. Today, I have a special treat for you guys. Let me reintroduce you to the world's largest, heaviest, toughest, 160 to 1, 3D printed, compound planetary gear set. This gearbox is the most impractical way to lift a lot of weight, especially when you've got a skid steer that's holding the gearbox up. It makes no sense at all. In the last video that we made about this gearbox, we proved that it could lift up a total weight of about 300 pounds without even breaking a sweat. Now, the reason that number is different from what we said in the first video is because the anvil had some confusing weight markings on it that come from the old English system. But we read your comments and we did the conversion and the result is that it could actually lift up 300 pounds instead of 260. So if we already know how much weight this gearbox can lift, why are we making another video about it? Well, the answer is simple. It didn't break yet and we found a few suggestions of things to lift with this monster gearbox and we're going to work through a few of those here today. So John Possum wants us to lift up the remote control lawnmower with this 160 to 1. Uh, we're going to give that a try. So that'll be the first goal. Okay so we got some 3-in-1 oil and uh, the gearbox. We're just going to lubricate this gearbox um, so that it doesn't melt or something like that. So here it goes, can it lift up the lawnmower? Of course it can. Hey Dylan, do you want to move the truck forward? Okay, so we could set this forklift down now, but that would defeat the purpose of a 3D printed gearbox. I mean, you gotta find some use for it, right? Okay, so that worked out, so. Thanks for that suggestion. Simon Vance wanted us to lift up a person, so I think I'm gonna try to lift up myself. We'll give that one a try. Beam me up, Scotty. Lift a person, he says. We'll lift a person. All right, ready? Yep. How do you feel about that? Did that work? Yeah, I think it worked. All right, you want me to set you down? You're gonna jump. Let me down. All right. Easy peasy. Right. And that worked out. Luca Cordon wanted us to lift up Thor's hammer with the 160 to one. Uh, so we'll see what we can find there. So we have this drawer with the word hammer on it, and I imagine that's where Thor's hammer is. Oh, that's not Thor's hammer. That's not Thor's hammer. That's not Thor's hammer. Yeah, I... Where did he put Thor's hammer? Yeah, I have no idea where Thor's hammer is. Darn it, guess we can't do that one. Sorry, don't have a hammer. Well, not Thor's hammer anyways, big difference. Engine lift? Yeah, if we can find one, we'll, we'll do that. Hell yeah. So you guys suggested that we lift up an engine and uh, well, I didn't want to take the engine out of my Duramax, and I, Dylan didn't want to take the engine out of his car. Uh, so we found this one. Uh, this might be from like a Model T. I'm sure it's at least 100 years old. Uh, we're going to try to lift this up. This isn't a full engine. Don't try this at home. This is completely stupid. Literally, we're supporting this gearbox off of a chain hoist, so it makes no sense to lift it up with this gearbox. Not to mention the fact that we're also using a ratchet strap to lift the weight of an engine. It's just a bad idea all around. So we're gonna give this a try. I'm gonna back up a little bit so I don't get to squash. And we'll see how this goes. Go the right way. And. Yeah, it's swinging. 
There you go guys, 3D printed engine hoist, but I don't suggest you ever use it. This is a horrible, horrible idea, and I'm just gonna put this down now because it's getting scary. That was the stupidest thing we've ever done on Gear Down for one. Yeah. And uh, that worked out. Lift a car, now we're talking. We can do that, I hope. Okay, so we got this all set up. Uh, this is a Baja car. If you're curious what that is, I'll show a little clip right here. Um, so this is a Baja car. It's really lightweight. I don't know if you noticed, but when I picked it up, the whole front of the car actually tipped forward because there's no weight in the back end. I stripped all the weight out of it. So the back end of this car should actually be pretty light. So I'm deciding to sit on it to add a little bit more weight. Okay, now that I've absorbed all the extra rope, I think that might be a no. Is that it? I don't know what happened. Let's look. I don't see anything wrong. Okay, we're gonna give this another try. It was making some crackling sounds there. We don't know what it was, so we got Dylan filming up close and we're gonna find out. No, nothing that I can see. Go as slow as possible. You know what I think is happening? What? I think the gears are skipping teeth on this middle ring where they're really small. Oh, okay. Yeah, the middle one is slipping. Is that what it is? Yep. I could, there's a black dirt spot here. Okay. And, and it was over here, and when it clicked, it went tit tit. All right, if you've got questions or suggestions for us, leave a comment below. And if you'd like to help my gear ratios reach a broader audience, hit that like button and share this video with your friends. And don't forget to subscribe and hit that little bell for new notifications for future videos. Hey guys, thanks for watching. We'd like to say thank you guys to all the new subscribers and well, all the original subscribers too. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers here on Gear Dump for What. You know, we really appreciate you guys uh, taking the time to watch these videos and uh, watch us fool around with these uh, 3D printed toys. Yeah, thank you guys for watching. So I've already shot this part like three times and frankly, I'm getting tired of it. Um, so this is the gearbox from shooting today. Uh, the same one that I used for lifting the anvil. I haven't modified it. All I've done is take it apart. These gear teeth, these are the ones that I'm pretty sure these were skipping on this ring gear. They weren't getting a grip on it. Now, they don't show actually any damage, and uh, this plastic looks a little bit white right now. The reason is because I soaked it in alcohol to get all of the 3-in-1 oil off of it. So, yeah, the, these gears show no damage whatsoever. This gearbox spins a hell of a lot easier now than it did um, when I first printed it out. I mean, it just spins really freely. I guess one reason why it won't spin very freely right now is because I've actually I took some of the gears out of alignment just messing with it here because there's this gap in the ring, the gears get out of alignment if you don't have this number two on, because this number two is so thick, it holds them all together. So anyways, I wanted to show off this robotic arm project a little bit. I've made some improvements, and one of them actually required that I stop using the timer in the servo library. Uh, so the servo for this demonstration isn't gonna do anything. Now, the version of the robotic arm project, which I'm not gonna release yet, to push buttons to control it. You could like send it home with a push button. Uh, you could make it turn with a push button or increase the X, Y, or Z uh, where it goes with a push button. But to do that, I had to disable some of the more important features just so I could get that part working. And then I'll go back and get the original features working again. But the coolest thing you can do with this is you can actually send G code through serial and it will receive those g-code commands and go to those specific places but I'll just show you um, kind of what it can do with these controls that I've got on it now 
x plus minus uh, y plus minus z plus z minus and then I could pick a position save it and then go to a next one save it save it save it save it so then I just hit another button and replay all the moves that I just saved And then I can do the same thing again. And then I can send it home, which is just straight up and down. And then next time it'll be closer to home and I won't have to skip as many steps when I have to send it home to figure out where the joint limits are. Um, so this is, this is how it goes home. It just hits the joint limit and then skips steps until it's, yeah. Anyways, just for those of you interested in the robotic arm project, just wanted to give you a quick glance of what I'm doing with it. Hey, thanks for watching.